Hello and welcome to mmlearn.org. My name is Maria Wellish and we're going to be spending a few moments together today talking about aging myths and facts. I think there's a lot of stereotypes about aging, a lot of fear of aging, and we sure see a lot in the media that's enough to scare us to death. Uh, I'm excited to be presenting this today. I just applied for my Medicare card yesterday, so um, this is a, a good time for me to be doing this even for myself. I think it's very interesting that most people age 65 and older are believe that they have moderate or severe memory impairment. And the truth is that short-term memory declines, but long-term care memory really stays pretty much intact. It is true that we have a fear of Alzheimer's disease. I don't want to negate that. But I want to tell you that many things that look like Alzheimer's, we need to know, can be something as simple as a B12 deficiency, a thyroid disorder. There are many things, medications that you're taking. So to immediately have a feeling that you're losing your mind, that you're losing your memory, you mustn't be afraid to go and talk to a physician and tell them what you're feeling, get that evaluated. Could it be as simple as some form of treatment or changing some of your medication? So memory impairment. Um, just remember, um, the most important thing is, as we go through all this series, there are some things that we can do. Another great fear of people age 65 and older, and this is a myth, they have a moderate or severe disability. And the truth is, the majority of people 65 or older are not disabled. And the percentage with the disability has declined over the years because we are taking better care of our health. We have better medications, better treatment, better orthopedic procedures. So I think that this is something that we worry about, but I think it's something maybe we worry about too much. This one is always interesting to me. If you live long enough, you're going to end up in a nursing home. I wonder how many of you know that only 5% of the population in America of people 65 or older live in a nursing home, only 5%. So we know that between 90 and 95% of people are going to be living at home. And I think that's very reassuring. This one is always amazing to me, is that um, old people, it's like dogs, can't learn new tricks. I'm too old for computers. I'm too old for a Kindle. I'm too old. You're not too old. It might take a little bit longer to learn. It might need a little bit more adaption for vision or something else. But I want to share with you that I work in a facility that, uh, in an organization that has over 850 residents. And they started out with nobody in an iPad club. And now that's one of our favorite things that people are doing. So I want you to know that learning new tricks is good for you and it can be done. This is another interesting fact um, that people uh, have um, the belief that older people have no interest or no uh, capacity for sex. It's true that our bodies are changing, they're aging, things change a lot for us as we go through menopause as women and men with their sexuality, but this doesn't mean it changes our interest or our need for intimacy. Again, I think we're so afraid to talk to doctors about things that are just a normal part of life. And I encourage you to talk to your physicians about this. But sexuality and aging is a normal part of aging. And it can be, um, I think, experienced in many different ways. And we have so many programs at MM Learn on sexuality and aging and other topics that we're talking about today. And at the end, uh, I will direct you to some of those. So I um, would tell you that uh, intimacy remains important throughout our lives. Physical activity. Uh, the myth is that people 65 and older are too old to take part in exercise or a weightlifting program, and it could actually hurt them. That is a myth. The fact is that physical activity at any age can strengthen your heart, your lungs, your muscles. It can also lower your blood pressure, and it can help slow bone loss. And when I talk to physicians around the country, you know what they tell me? It's weight-bearing activity that has the most effect. So that means take a walk. And I asked, how brisk, how long? Their thing was, get out, take a walk. And if you start with 10 minutes and that feels good, you can stop. 
add five minutes, make it 15 minutes, walk to a point, but you're going to find that you're going to end up enjoying it, and it helps not only your physical, but your mental ability as well. So the idea that you can't exercise after you're 65, that is false. This is another big one that comes up. Well, it's too late in my life to quit smoking because it's not going to make any difference. I have to tell you that is a myth because it does make a difference. It is never too late to quit smoking. Breathing should become easier. Blood flows to the arm and the leg increases when a smoker of any age quits. And what's different is, and I can honestly talk to this because when I was younger, I was a pack a day smoker and it was the hardest thing I ever did to quit smoking. Today, there are so many aids and so much behavioral therapy and things to help you to quit smoking where we used to believe we could never do it. You can, and we do know for a fact it can make a difference no matter what your age, no matter how late in life, it will improve your, um, your all around for you to be able to quit smoking. Oh, this is a great one, sleep. The older a person gets, the less sleep they need. That is not true. You need to wake up and feel rested, and there are a lot of reasons why our sleep cycles are disrupted. But we have to learn about good sleep hygiene, and there's some wonderful books out about it. We have an exceptional program, again, on MM Learn, an entire series, which lasts about 40 minutes to watch on how to improve your sleep. But sleep is very important. And also, naps are just fine. So if you have the time, I'd like to be able to take a nap during work, but um, it is not a normal part of aging. Uh, we just have to learn how to adapt to what are your changing needs for sleep. But it's very important, and we're seeing lots of effects of depression and other things that come from lack of sleep. The other thing is sleep, uh, many people talk about sleep apnea today and having sleep testing done. I'm a great believer that you should tell your doctor if you're not sleeping well. And do not take over-the-counter sleep aids for you until you have talked to the doctor. We know that after the age of 55, for sure 65, taking Benadryl can actually cause you to sleep or any of that Advil um, with Benadryl or Tylenol with the Benadryl. Um, that will actually cause you to fall in many cases. So you want to be very careful about that. This is an important topic, but sleep is important for sure. Oh, this is the biggest issue that I deal with, driving. Older drivers have the most driving accidents. You know, that's not true. Older drivers have fewer accidents per miles driven, and they tend to avoid speeding, and they tend to avoid driving at night, and that's really good. However, people over 70 are more likely to die from crash injuries and should have their hearing and their vision checked. What a great thing to think about. Yes, as we age up, some things happen, not to everybody, but with hearing and vision, and we need to make sure that we're continuing to keep those appointments and going to see our physicians. One of the biggest problems that I see with older folks is just not cleaning their glasses. And I am an older folk now, and I am de directly responsible for the same thing. I believe I have fallen because I have not cleaned my glasses. So the, the most autonomy, I think the happiest we were in life was when we turned 16 and got our driver's license. I think one of the saddest things in life is when we have to give up our driving. So there are classes to take to make you drive better when you get older. Look into AARP, look into your local area on agency to find out where there are driving classes for this. Some of it is just learning how to path to take right-hand turns. Again, we have a program on driving on mmlearn.org that I think could help you, but it isn't something that I feel like you're going to feel like that when you turn 65 or 70, you're going to lose your privilege to drive. But it is one of our biggest fears and a myth. This one is really interesting. Most of us don't think about AIDS, but there is a myth that older people don't need to worry about getting AIDS. And I think this is important for me to talk about. About 10%, that's interesting, 10% of all people with AIDS in the United States were 50 when they were first diagnosed. This means that older people need to take the same precautions that we're telling younger people to take. Sexually transmitted diseases, if you have more than one partner, it needs to be protected sex. You know, 
our physicians are very well versed on this and they don't have secrets they understand so be free and open when you talk to your doctor so just remember um, that AIDS can happen to somebody over 50 this is interesting with gender stereotypes too um, heart disease this is the myth heart disease is a man's disease and osteoporosis is a woman's disease heart is the number one killer for both men and women and women are at special risk for osteoporosis but that doesn't mean that men don't get that five, one in five americans with or at risk of developing disease um, uh, for osteoporosis are men so we have to look at it and say you know what we're pretty equal here where we used to think men had the heart attacks <clears throat> excuse me not so uh, we're all uh, susceptible to this so we're going to talk about what are some of the things that we can do to make this better last on this um, area I want to talk about is personality and this is grumpy cat and this is the myth that older people tend to become slow grumpy and set in their ways fact personality is one of the constants of life as people age they're likely to behave much as they did as they were becoming adults we all experience some sensory loss including changes in our vision our hearing our sense of taste our sense of smell and these changes are gradual and barring disease they occur at different rates and degrees from person to person age-related changes do not affect the ability to enjoy life so if personality seems to be changing significantly sensory changes depression reactions to medication might be the cause it might be your diet it might be lack of exercise it might be lack of sleep all the things we're talking it might be worrying about getting older it might be worrying about money but when we start finding ourselves getting really grumpy and not enjoying and, in, and appreciating life, we need to look, are there some root causes, and then what can we do to make some changes in that? We want to uh, live well. Uh, I always think people talk about aging well. I just want to live well. Another myth uh, is not really a myth. Falling is very common in seniors. And fear of falling actually causes falls. This is very interesting. So are there any things that we can do? Yes. Exercise is imperative. There are programs that have been called evidence-based that are called, uh, one of them is called a matter of balance. And they're offered in most cities across the nation. Great programs. Uh, things that you can do and there are total programs available online you can contact us if you'd like to have a link to different programs to prevent falling but this is actually a reality when people fall and fracture a hip this really does affect your life expectancy so when you think oh I can continue to wear high heels I want to leave my scatter rugs around because I like them in my home because it looks pretty. There's an awful lot that you can do to prevent these falls. And um, the truth of this one is you should have a fear of falling and, and take care of your body and take care of your home and your environment. Of all the things that I will talk about today, this is the thing um, that you should fear the most and is not a myth. Isolation kills you. Isolation causes depression isolation is something that we really need to look at in ourselves as we age up and I wondered why do we isolate well it's interesting that I just came from a conference that an entire afternoon was spent on this topic but what I came away with was if you go out with folks and you can't hear well and you're not part of the conversation you tend to not to want to go out with people if you're going out and you do have a walker or you do have a cane or a wheelchair you could if that happens and you feel that you're a burden to other people you feel that you're burdening your children and you begin to isolate this is a time in life that we need to learn to accept help we need to if we need to have something for our hearing to make us be able to remain social we have to do things to get ourselves out of the house and involved with people this may be one of the most important things that we do to age well age happy and age healthy is to get out of the house and be involved 
Maybe you can't volunteer, but if you can, or you can continue to work for a short time and do different things, this is very important. We're going to be doing a whole program on isolation, so watch for that as well. I'm going to end this with, what do, what do I call this? I call this good common sense, uh, also known as this is exactly what your mama taught you. She taught you to eat well. And we know that blueberries are very good for us, have antioxidant in them. Uh, if you don't like blueberries, other berries are just fine too. Reducing the amount of red meat, but eating some fish is very important for us. Uh, if you don't like fish, making sure that you have a very well-balanced diet. We talked about sleep. Good common sense. Your mom said you need to go to bed. You need to get your rest. Well, you do. These are common sense things for aging well. We know that having a faith-based tradition, no matter what your faith is, helps you. Number one, it gets you out of isolation. I think it's something that really supports you emotionally, and it's something that you ought to consider. So if you've left your church or you've left your faith, you may want to start reading, looking at where you would like to go, and it's also very engaging with other people. Family and friends, do not shut them out. It's very easy to offer help for other people, but very difficult to ask for assistance. Um, this is part of our life cycle, and I encourage you uh, to really develop and even make new friends. Um, I won't tell you to make a new family, but I would say um, if there's um, fences to mend, uh, this is a great time to look at doing that. And the final thing is exercise. Take a walk. If nothing else, take a walk. We do know that weight bearing is also very important for us. We've just done a program um, on physical therapy that you can watch online. It will be available for you to see on things that you can do to strengthen your ankles. Just strengthening your ankles with simple exercises can help prevent falls. To be 70 years young is sometimes far more cheerful and hopeful than to be 40 years old. Oliver Wendell Holmes. Have a good day.